Hello. My name is Emma Fry. I am starting a podcast for people who have discovered astrology, tarot, synchronicity, the more mystical side of Carl Jung, etc., etc., and are dealing with this new knowledge that they have likely had to assimilate on their own. Perhaps this is true for you. I know that it's true for me. And it can feel extremely lonely, destabilizing, overwhelming, sad, exciting, unnerving, heartening, so many emotions. And I'm well aware that astrology is an incredibly ancient art, uh, as is the tarot and mysticism in general, and this is nothing new, so to speak. However, we are, I believe, starting to exit a period of fairly staunch secularism, a period wherein God has been dead, a unnecessary period, I believe, of rebuilding, destruction and rebuilding. And we are on the extremely exciting cusp of, as Richard Tarnas calls it, a new worldview. Some believe this, some don't. I have no idea if astrology will ever become mainstream. Who's to say? However, I have a feeling that things are changing. We're on the brink of planetary collapse, which is new, as opposed to what many people might say about ice ages and ebbs and flows. We've never been at this stage of certain death when it comes to planet Earth. I find it not a coincidence that astrology is starting to make itself known, particularly by way of the internet, which has enabled us to discover its very real, uh, hard to dispute legitimacy. And like I said, I find this extremely exciting, heartening, but it's also very difficult to restructure the entire way that you connect with the world. And above all, I find that it can be extremely lonely. And this is why I wanted to start a podcast. So with that, let's get into the first episode. In this first podcast episode, I'd like to talk about what it feels like to be a student of astrology when interacting with people, situations in your day-to-day life. Of course, your day-to-day life will be different from mine, but 
I wanted to share mine in case it helps anyone else feel a little less alone. Because being a student of astrology in the year 2022 can feel a bit isolating to me anyway. So I have a kind of fun analogy for how it feels to be an astrologer. Uh, I'm sure that you all know the familiar trope from sci-fi or fantasy films in which the protagonist experiences something out of this world and then tries to communicate that to his community and and his community just kind of looks at him like he's crazy, like he needs to be institutionalized. And he's trying to say, no, I know that this information is legitimate and would benefit everyone to know, but it's so far outside of the way that the members of his community have structured their understanding of the world that it can't be let in. It's too wild. It's too crazy. And understandably so. Astrology, tarot, synchronicity, all of it changes the way we understand the world fundamentally. Cause and effect, randomness, everything kind of changes. I remember I was doing a reading, a tarot reading for my dad recently, and and he couldn't understand the concept of the cards speaking to the questions that he was asking. And it took me a while to get there as well. It's a complete, complete shift in the way that we understand this reality that we're living. Uh, And so it makes sense that people wouldn't be able to let that in. Um, But with that just comes this rift between people who study the esoteric and people who don't. And I personally came to an understanding of the esoteric on my own. No friend introduced it to me. Um, It was the internet. Uh, Let me tell you how I discovered it. It's kind of a funny story. A little embarrassing, actually. I was dating this guy, uh, maybe, what, three, four years ago, and we were very different, and I don't remember what compelled me, I wish I did, I don't remember what compelled me to search our astrology compatibility, but I did, and I learned that uh, him being a Capricorn and me being a Gemini just did not bode well for (laughs) a relationship compatibility. Obviously, there's so much more to a sinistry evaluation than just sun signs, but this was my first baby toe being dipped into the astrology pool, so forgive me. Um, But I was floored by how accurate uh, I felt the information was about Capricorn versus Gemini, and I something just made me continue looking. Of course, the guy thought that I was cuckoo bananas, um, and I did kind of as well, because up until that point, I know it's hard to believe, but I'd been a pretty staunch atheist, very into uh, Richard Dawkins, like the whole, you know, Christopher Hitchens, very, you know, staunch, staunch, anti-theistic atheism. And then suddenly there was just this shift. And I started researching more and more about astrology. 
and digging into my birth chart and it felt so accurate and I finally felt seen in ways that I hadn't my entire life. And of course, that's addicting. And so I just continued to dig and dig. And then I got to the really exciting part, which is where I started to see similarities in people's faces based on their planetary placements. I started to notice, for instance, that Aquarius suns all seem to have the same eyes, the same gaze. And I was floored by that. And I really started to dig into that to anchor my study of astrology in something tangible, something that my senses could register as a seeming truth. I'm a Virgo rising, so I tend to be skeptical by nature. And seeing the patterns in people's faces, in the way that they talked, um, that really solidified things for me. And it allowed me to continue studying with that certainty anchor, so to speak. And so fast forward about three to four years and here I am making this podcast and it's been a wild few years. Uh, The pandemic really allowed me to dig pretty deeply into my studies uh, and I first started really connecting with the tarot right at the start of the pandemic, um, probably because we were all extremely lonely and the tarot can be something of a friend, as I'm sure others here can resonate with. Um, But so that is my story in a nutshell. I'm sure I'll dig into it at a later date, a little bit deeper. But all of that is just to say that it's been an extremely uh, individual practice. I would give anything to study at... Pacifica, say, or the California Institute of Integral Studies, I believe is what it's called. Institute for Integral Studies. Um, no, it's of. Sorry, I just Googled. But obviously, that's a lot, of, a lot of money, and I already went to college, undergrad, and paid a lot of money to do so. So I just, you know, there's been a lot of shade thrown the internet's way as a tool for isolation, but it's done the opposite for me. It's provided a place for a connection with other astrology students, tarot students, um, depth psychology students. Um, and that's been everything. That's been absolutely everything. And that's why I'm making this podcast is to contribute to that sense of connection Um, and I don't know what the rest of this podcast series will entail. I would like to have guests, um, whom I've met from the astrology and tarot and mysticism community online. Um, but we'll see. Mostly I just want to get my experience out there so that maybe other people can resonate with it relate to it and feel a little less alone like the protagonist that I talked about from the sci-fi fantasy films. If you enjoyed listening to this and would like to continue to hear me, please stick around. There will be more episodes um, and I'm really excited to see where it goes. Thank you so, so much for listening, and I would love to hear your thoughts on all of this. All right. Have a good one. Bye.